These are notes on oxidation numbers. We're going to do oxidation numbers before we start naming because we think that it's going to help you with naming our D block elements that have a little bit interesting characteristics to them. So what are oxidation numbers? These are very similar to charge, but what they do is they show electron distribution specifically within a compound. So there's some rules that you need to follow when doing oxidation numbers. Pure elements are always zero. These guys are always a zero charge, the atom or the diatomic molecule is going to be neutral, so the charge on that atom is always going to be zero. F minus one is always a negative one, it's the most electronegative, you learned that in the periodic trends unit, it's the biggest bully on the periodic table, it's the most electronegative, it's always a charge of negative one. It's also in column 17, which is a halogen, and these guys are always going to have a negative one charge. And there's another rule down here in number six, group 17, column is always a negative one charge. So fluorine is always, always going to be a negative one charge. Oxygen is almost always a negative two. There are some caveats to that, exceptions. OF2, the oxygen is going to be a plus two charge. And then with H2O2, the oxygen is going to be a negative one charge. We will use the general rule a majority of the time and try to remind you of those exceptions if you need to apply them. Group 1, column 1A is a plus 1. We're going to use the general rule the majority of the time and its hydrogen is mostly the plus 1. Hydrogen is an exception with a metal. NaH hydrogen would be a minus 1. And again, we're going to try to remind you if you need to identify the exception to the rule. Group 2, column 2A. These have two valence electrons, so the ion will be a plus 2, so our oxidation numbers will be a plus two. Group 13 is column 3A. These have a plus three oxidation number. This column has three valence electrons and the ion will be a plus three. So hopefully you're seeing some correlation between the valence electrons and the ion charge and the oxidation number. Again, group 17, um, so these, sorry, so these will help identify the charge and the electron distribution. So group 17, these are halogens, they have seven valence electrons, so the ion will be a minus one. When we look at oxidation numbers and totaling, we always want to look at the compound sum. Unless it's shown to us, like in a polyatomic ion, a compound sum is always going to be zero. All atoms are going to give or take electrons to, or share them, to be able to be like a noble gas and be electrically neutral. And so electrons in a compound that's electrically neutral, the oxidation number sum is going to be zero. Polyatomic ions, these are going to have a charge, and you can find these charges in these ions on the table on the back of your periodic table. And SO4 minus 2, for example, the total charge would be a minus 2. NO3 minus 1, for example, the total charge would be a minus 1. So use your ion chart when dealing with polyatomic ions. Polyatomic, remember, means many atoms, and you do need to learn these names and these charges of these polyatomic ions to make your life easier when writing chemical formulas and when writing chemical reactions. So when dealing with oxidation numbers, we're going to use the rules for the above compounds for the elements that you know. So you're always going to start with the elements that you know, and then to determine an element in that compound that you don't know, you're going to determine Roman numerals, and we'll teach you a little bit more about that when we learn how to name. And then you're also just going to use process of elimination if you know one of the compounds and you only have two compounds, you know the other charge. And let's get to some examples. So in this, we're going to again use the rules for the compound. So we're going to identify the charge of the known elements first. So in our example here of these two, nitrogen and oxygen, I know oxygen's a minus two. Remember, we're going to use that general rule there. So it's in column 16, which makes it a minus two charge. And so I'm going to put the actual charge of the atom or of the of the electron above. So right here it's a minus two charge on oxygen. And then I'm going to identify how many oxygens I have. So that's I have four oxygens. That's what that subscript is telling me. So my total charge in oxygen there is negative two times four, which equals a negative eight. So my actual charge is a negative two. My total charge is a negative eight because I have four oxygen atoms. So then I know that the sum of my compound is zero because there's no charge right here. For example, there's a charge right there, and we'll get to that example in a second, but it's a frame of reference when I'm talking about no charge. 
So now, because the sum of the compound is zero, I need to identify that a negative eight and a positive eight would give that a zero charge. And so I know that the total charge on this nitrogen atom in this compound is a positive eight. So now to figure out the actual charge of the nitrogen atom, I've got to identify that there are two nitrogen atoms, and I've got to say, okay, a positive eight charge divided by two nitrogen atoms means that the nitrogen atom has a positive four charge. So that's the electron distribution within that compound, and that's, those are the correct oxidation numbers. So let's do H3PO4. Sometimes we're going to do PO4 as an ion, and sometimes we're going to do these as separate elements. Because of that split line there, we're going to actually identify those elements' oxidation numbers separately. So the first thing that we're going to do is identify our known elements first, and I actually know two, hydrogen and oxygen. I'm going to start with the hydrogen, and I know the charge on hydrogen is always a plus one. I know that there are three hydrogens because of that subscript right there. One times three equals a positive three. And then I know that oxygen's charge is a negative two. And most of the time, in a lot of these examples, you're always going to know oxygen's charge. And I know that I have four oxygens, so I'm going to take a negative two times four equals a negative eight. Because there's no charge on the compound itself, we know that the compound sum is zero. Then what we can do is identify a positive three plus a value minus eight is going to equal zero. That's going to help us figure out our total charge on this phosphorus there. And that answer is a positive five because there's only one phosphorus atom there. The positive five goes up there and that's my electron distribution of H3PO4, which is actually phosphoric acid. Let's move on to one with a charge. So our charge right here is showing us that it's the negative one, so that's gonna be our sum. And it's important that we need to identify that because that will help us with our electron distribution. So I know my charge is negative, or my sum is negative one. I know between nitrogen and oxygen, I know between nitrogen and oxygen here that my oxygen is a negative two. I know that I have three of them, so my total charge on oxygen is negative six. So then I've got to ask myself, what plus a negative six? So what plus a negative six equals a negative one? And that would be a positive five, because there's only one nitrogen atom. There's no superscript there, but it's an, or subscript there, but it's an assumed one. Because there's no subscript there, I know that there's one there, so my actual charge on nitrogen is a plus five. So there's my electron distribution in that ion. And I'm going to have you look at your ion chart on the back of your periodic table that you got to figure out what the name of that ion is. All right, so let's do an example for two unknowns. So in this case, we don't know the iron because it's in the D block and there's no Roman numerals with it, and that goes along with our naming rules, and so we'll talk about those a little bit later. And we also don't know the phosphorus. A lot of times things in uh, carbons group and nitrogens group and uh, are hard to figure out the ele electrons on because they're variable and most of the time those things are going to form covalent bonds instead of ionic bonds. But we do know, we know oxygen, but that's not really going to help us because we have two unknowns. The thing that we do know is that this is an ion, it's a polyatomic ion, and it's phosphate, and we do know the charge of that total ion there, and that's what we're going to use. So we're going to circle our polyatomic ion, and then we're going to give the group the ion charge, and then determine the charge of the metal. So the first thing that we're going to do is circle our phosphate ion there, so that's telling us that that's my phosphate ion. And I'm going to identify my charge on the phosphate ion as a negative three, and I got that from the back of the periodic table. And I know that there's only one of them, because there's no parentheses and it's not telling me I have any extra. And then I've got a negative three times one is negative three. I know the sum of my compound is zero. Because the sum of my compound is zero, I'm going to be able to figure out that what plus a negative three is going to equal zero. So I know a positive three plus a negative three is going to equal zero. There's only one iron there, so I know the charge on the iron atom is a plus three. That's going to help us name it. We're going to learn how to name later. So don't worry about filling in the names yet. All right, let's do one more with polyatomic example, Fe3PO42. So I'm going to circle my phosphate ion again. And again, I know that that's a negative three charge. This time I have two of them, though. That parentheses in subscript two is telling me that there's two. So I'm going to go negative three times two is a negative six. 
So I know the total charge on the phosphate ion is negative 6. I know my compound sum is 0. So that means that what plus a negative 6 equals 0? Well, that's a positive 6. Then I can identify that I have 3 iron atoms. So 6 divided by 3 is going to equal our charge on our iron atom. So that would be a plus 2 charge in that electron distribution oxidation number. So as you can see, iron can have multiple charges, plus 3 or plus 2, so that's why we will learn how to name those later, and, and the charge will help us with the name. So that's why we want to do oxidation numbers first. Thank you for taking these notes and coming ready to class, and we will practice the rest of these in class and, I, and check them in class. Thanks.